world, and welcome to the CWIT podcast. My name is Chris Lang. I'm the engineering manager here at CWIT, and I'm joined today with Tracy Wong, a crypto journalist. Welcome, Tracy. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Chris, thank you so much for having me. No, thank you, of course. So I, I do just want to uh, usually start this off with a little bit of introduction to you, to the audience. So maybe you could just give us a little bit of background on the, the work that you do and the role that you have. Yeah, so I've been now a journalist covering the cryptocurrency space for the past few years. I used to be the deputy managing editor at Coindesk, which was a crypto trade journal. Um, and now I am a contributing writer at uh, Rolling Stone. And um, back when I was at Coindesk, I was actually one of the journalists on the team that broke the uh, Sam Bigman fried FTX story. Oh, wow. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us today here at the CWIT conference and again on our CWIT podcast. So uh, the, the theme of the CWA conference is building a, a safer, sustainable, and more environmentally friendly future. But I'd like to start today by talking about what would you say a common myth is about your job or your field of expertise? Sure. Um, I have two points to make about both crypto and journalism. First, <laughs> journalism, if there are any aspiring journalists listening to this, I would say that it is definitely a viable career field. I think media gets a lot of, um, you know, it's it's... Everyone says that it's dying, but I, I feel like actually covering an emerging technology where there is something new going on, that has really invigorated kind of journalism. And we need more journalists like that covering these emerging technologies. On crypto, I would say there's been kind of a stereotype about cryptocurrency that is just being used for drug dealers and uh, money laundering and all of this nefarious right. activity. But I, I think, you know, people in the crypto space, there is a lot more innovation going on in the space than I think the traditional narratives that the media has, has <laughs> talked about. Sure. Yeah, no. So I think that that's such a great point, though, that you had made where, you know, it, it is such a exciting field and there is so much room for so many different people to get involved with their different voices and, and add to, you know, the, the, the collective uh, wisdom that we can all share by talking to each other and, and being involved in these fields. So, uh, Looking at the themes in the CEWA conference, which is forward-looking about technology for building that healthier, safer, and more sustainable future, what type of technology do you see in, in your vision and in your perspective would be used? What type of technology would be used to build that type mm -hmm. of future? It's hard to say to pinpoint a single technology, but I have noticed certain trends that I think will, will definitely play a big part in, uh, in the future. One just being that we live in an increasingly digital world. People right. spend... Now, um, you know, tens of hours, <laughs> almost your entire day on your right. phone. It feels like it for sure sometimes. Correct. Yeah. Or, and, and I think, you know, that's a very noticeable shift from a decade or two decades ago. Definitely. And and that brings about all this new opportunity, whether it be AI, whether it be crypto, whether it be, um, you know, the metaverse. I think we're going to be living in an increasingly digital future, and that will... Uh, that transition will touch every aspect of your day-to-day -day life, whether it be entertainment or finance. And so I, I think that direction is a safe bet. No, but for, I can't, I can't <laughs> say which technologies will be winners or losers, definitely. but that's definitely. Yeah, and the, the landscape of technologies is so exp expansive and there are so many different ways for people to plug into that technology. So I would say, yeah, I would agree. It's so hard to pick just one technology, but I do think that, the, you know, as the digital space grows. There's just so many different ways that people can get plugged in. But from the perspective of people who are interested in getting involved in this, you know, growing digital space, what would you say? So if you were going to give advice to a student or if someone who is maybe not necessarily directly plugged into technology right now, but is looking to get involved in technology or work to move onto a path where they, they can be part of this new technology and this exciting growth that we're seeing in the space, what, what advice would you give to someone? I would say find maybe a subsector that you're really interested in, like, or maybe you're really interested in finance. And like fintech has been, uh, has blown up in the past, past, uh, All over past the decades. News. <laughs> and also the, you know, digi digitalization has changed the way in which, you know, we interact with money. And so, or maybe you're really passionate about sports. And I think like just the fact that, technology is kind of shifting almost every single industry, whether it be media, like I'm, I am in media, whether it be sports, finance, I think uh, there is always an intersection there that you can you can be at the forefront of. Right. So no matter where you, you kind of are involved right now, I think that one of the, the 
the themes that I'm personally seeing in the CEWA conference is just that it, everyone is impacted in, by technology in their own way. So right, you can take the lessons that are being learned, whether that's in healthcare, whether that's in media, whether that's in you know, uh, different technological spaces, and you can bring that back. And that also gives room for everyone to add their voice and be uh, a part of building that safer and more sustainable future together. So one of the uh, core themes at the CEWA conference is AI and machine learning. So of course, you, you're probably expecting one of the questions on this chat. GPT. Uh, becoming household names right now. So how would you say that this type of technology, machine learning, has impacted the way that you work in your career? And how do you think that that's really going to be impacting people as we move forward? Yeah, so um, two ways in which machine learning has in impacted my career as just a crypto journalist. First, everybody's now interested in AI and it is the new hot sector. And so there's been less interest, in cr less interest on a relative basis in crypto. And so I... Uh, Partially, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that some that the tide swings back to crypto one day. <laughs> uh, but also AI, um, you know, lots of people have talked about the impact of AI on media and how, you know, you can give ChatGPT a prompt, like write right. me a five paragraph story about uh, whatever topic. And so I think in the media space, uh, the media space in general will, will definitely be massively mm -hmm. disrupted by AI in the sense that now I think about what I write and I think like, does this add value? And sure. I don't want to be writing anything that, uh, that a chat GPT can essentially, um, can essentially replicate. I think we're all worried about being replaced by chat GPT. And so I, I think, you know, that's really made me focus on, you know, breaking news or things that, uh, what type of information could I deliver as a journalist that ChatGPT can't replicate? Yeah, I think that that's such a great point because there is limitations to these different AI systems and models. And, and there's, you know, bringing in the human element and the subject matter expertise where, you know, you can say, I'm using this technology to help advance what I'm trying to do, but it's not necessarily replacing me, right? There, there are things that we will add the value to, and there's things that only uh, we can work on, whether that's mm -hmm. breaking news or these different media platforms, where we can say, you know, taking a look at what's coming out of the model and uh, looking and saying, okay, how can we use this to accelerate and enable ourselves, but not necessarily just taking what it already gave us, right? We can uh, look at the results of these models. Maybe we have to tailor them. Uh, for me, in you know, my experience, one thing that the, these models have helped is with a blank page syndrome, where you have, you know, uh, prompts that you can do to generate something to, to start off with, but you definitely have to take that and uh, tailor it a little bit more to the use cases. So you would say that it's very much leveraging this technology to help what, us, what we're doing. It's not so much that these systems are kind of replacing what you do in, in any sense, right? Correct. I do think um, ChatGPT does aid me. Like a lot of times when I'm writing a story, I need to find information. I find that ChatGPT is very useful for search. We've used AI generated images for the cover, like thumbnail photos of stories. But it's also thinking about, gosh, um, you know, AI might be very good at this particular thing, but my job requires me to also use these other skill sets. Like, for example, um, ChatGPT so far doesn't have the ability to like break news. If, if right. you know, it's it's currently trained on the information that's already out there, and part yeah. of the role of a journalist is to like figure out, like in the FTX SBF case, like what is the story out there that the ChatGPT doesn't know. Um, yeah. And so, focusing on that part has, has really it's. It, it makes you shift your priorities. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a, a great point because these, <laughs> these systems are trained on data. And while there is a lot of data out there, you know, there is still this space where they aren't exactly on the ground for these breaking cases. So I do just want to thank you so much for being part of our, our CWIT conference and for joining us today on the CWIT podcast. So thank you again for uh, joining us and hoping to see everyone on our next episode. Thank you for having me, Chris. Of course, thank you.